What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the recently launched Xiaomi Watch 2. Now this smartwatch is powered by Snapdragon's W5 Plus Gen 1 chipset and running Wear OS by Google. So you get access to all the popular apps on your wrist, including Google Assistant, Google Wallet, Google Maps, and of course, the Google Play Store. So you can download many more third-party apps, watch faces, and lots more. Now, what's incredible about this watch is the price. This has to be the cheapest smartwatch running Google Wear OS and powered by Snapdragon's W5 Plus Gen 1. So Wear OS by Google includes Google Wallet and NFC payments. So the Xiaomi Watch 2 is currently priced on sale at only 149. Normal price will be 169 pounds thereafter. So this smartwatch is currently half the price than the leading competing watches, namely the Galaxy Watch 6 and the Tick Watch Pro 5 and the new OnePlus Watch 2, which is coming soon on the channel. Now they all retail for around 300 pounds. So don't be surprised if they drop their prices down drastically um, as when Xiaomi launch a product, it absolutely shakes up the market. So it's a win-win situation for consumers. Now let's talk about the design. Now the design is quite nice. The watch body is made from aluminium finished in black. And I just want to guess and say it's tempered glass on top as there is no mention on Xiaomi's official website in what type of glass is being used. But the cheaper Xiaomi Band 8 Pro, which also launched at the same time as this watch, uses Gorilla Glass 3. So I'm testing this as well, full review coming soon. So this one uses Gorilla Glass 3. And considering the low price of this watch, I think it makes sense that this is gonna be either Gorilla Glass 3 or Tempered Glass on top. Now on the right, we have two buttons, power button and back button. Just between those buttons, slightly at the bottom, you can see we have a microphone hole. And on the other side, we have nothing, but just underneath, you can see we have a loud speaker. So built-in microphone and built-in speaker, as this phone does support Bluetooth phone calls. At the bottom, we have our health sensors featuring 12-channel PPG monitoring to keep track of your heart rate, blood oxygen saturation, and stress levels. The watch also has a number of advanced health tracking features, which we're coming to later in the video. And just under the health sensors, you can see two polar pins for your charger. And I'll quickly show you the charger in action. So it's a magnetic charging pad with a USB-A connector, and it does support fast charging. So it takes 45 minutes to fully charge that 495 milliamp hour battery. Furthermore, this watch does have 580M water resistance. There is no military standard durability, but nevertheless, it's still nice to have that water resistance and you can track your swimming metrics on this. Furthermore, the straps are made from silicon and they do feature a quick release and you can easily replace these with your own 22 millimeter band and the buckle itself is made from metal. And this is how the watch looks on my wrist. Now I do have a wrist circumference of seven inches. I think the watch is rather on the larger side than what I'm used to. Now there is a big screen watch, it's quite large. Um, I don't mind too much as it is quite light and comfortable and it's not too fat either. Very comfortable on the wrist and a nice, beautiful, large display. And talking about the display, that is a 1.43 inch AMOLED display with a screen resolution of 466 by 466 and 326 pixels per inch. This watch does feature an always on display and will give you up to 600 nits of peak brightness. And the screen is no doubt pretty nice to look at as expected from an AMOLED display. Now watch dimensions, it's 47.5 millimeters in diameter with a thickness of 11.8 millimeters and it actually weighs 52 grams with the straps on. Now to give you an idea of the size, I will bring in the most recent Samsung Galaxy Watch 6. And here they are side by side. So Galaxy Watch 6 is 44.4 millimeters in diameter versus 47.5 millimeters. 9.8 millimeters in thickness versus 11.8 millimeters in thickness. So yes, Xiaomi Watch 2 is slightly bigger and slightly thicker than the Galaxy Watch 6. Now, if you wanna see a full comparison between these two guys, smash the like button to let me know. Now let's talk performance. This watch is powered by the Snapdragon W5 Plus Gen 1 with two gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. Now this watch also features Bluetooth 5.2. You've got built-in multi-satellite GPS, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi and supports NFC payments via Google Pay. And the smartwatch is of course running official Wear OS by Google version 3.5. Now coming to the battery life. Now the Xiaomi Watch 2 features a generous 495 milliamp hour battery built in. And depending on how you use the watch, you can achieve up to three whole days. 
Xiaomi quotes 65 hours, which is 2.7 days, and I think that is about right. Now, the real battery drainer in this watch is the always-on display. So as soon as you wear the watch, if you don't need it, I suggest you switch off the always-on display and enjoy a better battery life. And to give you an idea of how I use this watch, I set the heart rate to continuous smart monitoring. I also set blood oxygen monitoring to all day tracking. By default, blood oxygen monitoring was off. So Xiaomi's 65 hour battery life is based on the SBO2 being on manual mode switched off. But I like to have this feature on constantly. Um, also, stress monitoring. I left the stress monitoring off as I don't really care to see my stress levels as it would probably stress me out more seeing my high stress levels. So yeah, it's off by default and I've left it off anyway. Standing up reminders, I don't need because if I'm busy, I'm not going to listen to those reminders and it's going to bug me. They're off by default and I leave them off. Raise to wake is another feature that is off by default. If you switch it on, it can drain the battery. So when you move your hands around normally, you can accidentally wake the screen up many times throughout the day. And yes, it will certainly help drain that battery. Now always on display is off by default and I left it off. Um, that is the real battery killer there. If you want always on display, it does look nice, but you can expect less of a battery performance. Now brightness, I usually have set to adaptive and based on my settings, I was able to achieve two full days of battery life, which is basically along the same lines as my Galaxy Watch 6. Another scenario, I switched everything on. So I switched on every single health feature, 24 hour tracking for heart rate, SpO2 and stress levels. Everything was continuous 24 hours. I also switched on the advanced sleep monitoring and monitoring your nighttime breathing. And I also switched on automatic workout detection. I still switched the always on display off and the battery lasted just over a day. I had to charge it in the morning. So that should give you a very good idea on what to expect from the battery life. And the only Wear OS watch that's broke the barrier of two to three days is the TicWatch Pro 5. This one really lasts long. It's a big battery in the, and it lasts uh, a lot longer than any other Wear OS watch, TicWatch Pro 5. But otherwise you can, you can expect more or less the same with this watch, two to three days max. Now one massive advantage that I really like with this watch is fast charging. 45 minutes equals 100% charge. So in the morning when you're getting ready for work or school, just put it on charge and before you leave your home, you'll be close to 100% battery again. So fast charging is great. Now let's talk about sleep tracking. It's one of the most important features for me uh, when it comes to a smartwatch. I don't usually get enough sleep. Five hours or less is what I usually achieve. By wearing a smartwatch, I can see exactly how long I've slept. Furthermore, I always wake up every day before sunrise. I pray and then I go back to sleep. So this smartwatch has to be able to understand multiple sleep stages and patterns. I have to say this watch does a pretty good job. And let me show you how I got on. So in the smartphone app, you can see straight away last night, eight hours and 42 minutes sleep. If we scroll down, there are two sleep stages here that's been recorded. The first one you can see here, I fell asleep at 9.31 p.m., which is correct. I was in bed about quarter past nine. I guess I fell asleep within 15 minutes. That's what the watch is telling me. And I woke up at 3.30 a.m. So that's true. I set my alarm on the watch, 3.30 a.m. It woke me up to prepare for my fast, have a shower and then pray. So after all that, I went back to bed. So if we scroll up a little bit, you will see the second stage where I slept for three hours more. So I went back to bed at 5.36 a.m. And yes, I fell asleep quite straight away. I was very tired and I woke up in the morning 8.55 a.m. The watch has separated both sleeps and given me an accurate breakdown of what has happened. To make sure this was accurate, I actually wore a health ring and I wore another watch. So I had three devices in bed tracking my sleep. And let me just tell you, because I don't want to spoil the future videos, two of the devices gave us very similar reading and one of them was this watch. So you can expect accurate sleep tracking. This, now I'm actually quite happy to tell you because I do love this feature. This watch allows you to take Bluetooth phone calls. So all the calls you receive on your phone will be pushed to the watch and you can answer directly on the watch using the watch's built-in microphone and speaker. And the call quality is great. So let me just give you guys a quick taste of what to expect. So we are now testing out the audio quality of this smartwatch. I am speaking directly into my smartphone and you should be hearing my voice loud and clear on the smartwatch's loudspeaker. So this should give you a pretty good idea of the microphone and speaker quality on this watch. All right, so now let's talk about watch faces and features. 
Now I just switch back to the default watch face and I have to say it's a pretty nice watch face. In fact, watch faces in general look beautiful on that AMOLED display. And there are a number of watch faces built in. To change the watch face, just keep the center press for two seconds and then you'll be presented with a rather large choice of different watch faces that you can instantly change to. Now you can customize some of these watch faces too. You can either do it directly on the watch or on the phone. It's easier for me to show you on the phone, so I'll do it on the phone. So if we select a watch face, this one's called Space Station. If we just press apply, you can see it's already applied to the watch. You can see this watch face has two different colors that you can select. You can have black or you can have the blue element to it. And then you have two complications that you can change as well. So it's set on battery, but you can remove that and you can put any other feature there. And there's a lot to choose from. So very nicely laid out and easy to customize your chosen watch face. Furthermore, there are a lot of built-in watch faces you can see here. These are all ready to use. You don't have to download them. You just tap on them and hit apply and it takes just a few seconds to change. You can change the watch face very fast, as you can see. Once you get to the bottom of the list, it will say more. If you tap on more, it will take you to the Play Store downloads page. So you can download even more watch faces here and there are lots of free and paid options available. Now I just want to download one watch face to show you how it works. So here's one watch face here that looks decent. If I hit install, it's going to download the watch face. It's telling me the app will be installed on your watches soon. Installing, hit open and then, then tap on install app on Wear device. Immediately, you'll get a prompt on your watch to tap install and you can see it's downloading and installing and it's done. But the watch face is not applied yet. So you need to go back and go back once more. So go to your list of watch faces. You will see the new watch face right there. Tap on it and then hit apply. And within a few seconds, you can see our downloaded watch face has been applied. And that's actually not a bad looking watch face. So Wear OS by Google and the Play Store opens the doors for you for thousands and thousands of potential watch faces that you can download. So I'm just gonna give you guys a quick taste of the default watch faces that you get with this smartwatch. So now it's time to go through the watch features. If you swipe up from the bottom, you will see quick toggles for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, aeroplane mode, battery saver mode, and more. If you swipe down from the top, you will see your notifications, your emails, your WhatsApp messages, and you can reply to most notifications and messages directly on the watch. So here is an example. So here is a Twitter post by nothing. Um, I can tap like, so I've liked the tweet already, just like that. If you receive an email, you have the option or type a reply. So I'm just gonna show you what it's like to type on this very quickly. I'm just gonna say, hi, how's it going? So I'm not trying to hit it accurately. I'm just doing it randomly. There is autocorrect there. So um, you can see it's working fine most of the time. So, so it's possible to type on this fast, even though I don't have small fingers. Um, it's, it's it's doing an okay job and there are other ways to respond. You can use your voice or you can use emojis. If you want to use your voice, all you have to do is speak now and it's going to start typing everything it hears. It's a really easy way to respond to notifications directly on the watch. Now, if we swipe to the left or right, you will see your health tiles. Starting off with local weather, then we've got workouts and I believe there are over 150 workouts built in. If we keep going, you've got sleep tracking, heart rate monitoring, SpO2, blood oxygen monitoring, and that will bring you back to the watch face. Now the tiles can be customized directly on the watch. Just select a tile, keep the center press, and you can basically add and remove things quite easily. Um, if you want to add a tile right at the end, you can add, and you can add any of these features. I think I want to add alarm. That would be quite handy. So I just added a tile there. If you want to change the location of a tile, you just keep it pressed and you can drag it where you want. I'm going to put alarm at the front because I'm not too fussed about weather and weather can go right at the end. So that's how easy it is to rearrange the tiles. You can do the same thing on the, on the phone. And of course, it's much easier on the phone. Now to access your system apps, you just press the top button once and you will see all your apps. Now, let me quickly go through these with you. 
So we've got agenda, alarm, Google Assistant, breathing, camera, so that's a remote camera. You've got a compass, find my phone, Google Wallet. So you've got NFC payments with Google Wallet, hand wash timer, heart rate monitoring, history. We've got Google Maps, media controls, messages, phone, Google Play Store, pressure and elevation. We've got sound recorder, running course. You've got your main settings, sleep monitoring, blood oxygen monitoring. You've got your health stats, stopwatch, stress, timer, torch, weather, workouts, world clock and YouTube music. So yeah, a lot of apps are included as standard, but you've also got the Google Play Store. So you can go into the Play Store and you can download many apps, including WhatsApp Messenger. So I want to give you guys a very quick walkthrough of the smartphone app. It's called Me Fitness. As soon as you open it, you'll have your health at a glance, showing you all your health metrics. And it also automatically pairs and syncs with the watch. And you can view detailed reports of any of these metrics by simply tapping on them. And it will give you a daily, weekly, monthly view summary of your stats. And if you tap on the device section, it will give you a whole bunch of options to play around with. And I'll quickly go through them with you. You've got your watch faces, so you can change your watch face directly from here and access the Play Store as well. We've got app notifications, weather, world clock, take watch screenshot. Now this over here is a shortcut to the Play Store so you can download more apps. Here are your settings for heart rate, sleep monitoring, blood oxygen, stress, standing, stats, managing the tiles. As I mentioned, you can manage the tiles even easier from here. It's quicker and so on and so forth. So there is a me section profile section here as well, where you can activate third party data and you've got some preferences that you can set, including your targets and goals, etc. Furthermore, this watch has five ATM water resistance. I've worn it in the shower a few times, although you shouldn't actually wear it in a hot shower or a hot sauna. This is really designed for five ATM swimming and it can track your swimming strokes, but I've not actually had a chance to wear it while swimming. So now we're going to test out the health sensors. This is the O2 ring. It's a medical grade oximeter that you wear on your thumb and it can read your heart rate and blood oxygen at the same time. You can see my heart, current heart rate. It's uh, 91 beats per minute. And if we just look closely at the medical grade sensor, it also it is also giving me 91 beats per minute. 92, 88 on this is going down slightly. 92 on the oximeter. That's just jumped down to 81. So 78, 80, 83, 82, very similar, not bad at all. Let's uh, check out the SpO2 now. So I've got to stay still for this. So we are currently checking our blood oxygen saturation on the watch and comparing it to the O2 ring. And I'm trying my best to stay absolutely still. So we have achieved 97% blood oxygen on the watch and in comparison, 96 on the O2 ring. 96% versus 97%. What do you guys think? That's not bad at all. It actually did much better than I expected it to. So that brings us to our top smartwatch chart for 2024, showing you the latest smartwatches and seeing how they compare with each other. And all watches have been ranked by overall build quality and features. So based on that, the new Xiaomi Watch 2 takes position five on this chart. Now, the main reason I gave it this ranking is the build quality is not on par with the leading smartwatches. The Xiaomi Watch 2 lacks military standard durability and sapphire glass protection. So I could not give it a higher position than it has currently achieved. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new Xiaomi Watch 2. So here are my thoughts. I'm actually very impressed with the smartwatch. A Wear OS smartwatch with Snapdragon chipset for only £149 right now special price is very hard to believe and it's almost too good to be true. It's a dream come true for Wear OS smartwatch lovers. This watch is packed with lots of features. Health tracking was pretty decent. Now I didn't do any hardcore scientific tests but for tracking your basic daily steps, your sleep, your heart rate, SpO2, this watch did a wonderful job for me. Bluetooth calls are loud and clear and 5 ATM water resistance is well appreciated. Now there are only two caveats and they're actually not that bad. The first one is what glass protection have they used? There is no info on the Xiaomi website. It's like they don't want to disclose the fact but they are using Gorilla Glass 3 in their £54 Smart Band 8 Pro, as stated on the same site. So I want to believe that they've used at least Gorilla Glass 3 in the Xiaomi Watch 2. Only Xiaomi can confirm this themselves, otherwise we need Jerry Riggs everything to work his magic. 
Now saying all that, I have not managed to scuff or scratch the screen after many days of usage. So it's going to be something decent, but we just don't know what it is. Now the second caveat is no military standard durability. The more expensive Samsung and Tick watches have this feature and it would be nice to have as it means the watch can withstand extreme high and extremely low temperatures. It can also withstand a knock or two. It just means the watch will be designed to last longer. Not having it makes me a bit paranoid, especially as I'm used to having it with my main smartwatches. So no military standard durability means uh, you're going to be a little bit on edge and you're probably going to look after the watch a little bit more. Now, with all of that being said, I still absolutely love this smartwatch, especially for the price. It's an absolute bargain. Now, if you have any questions or if there's something you want me to test specifically, do let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of my latest and greatest unbiased tech reviews, hit the like button, sub to the channel and smash that bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.